Um, just get, just to quickly go back here, um, what this stamping, like this, when you first time see this, this seems kind of complicated and convoluted, like you go to the copy and then you go up here, you grab this information and you put it back. Um, what, in theory, to simply explain this, let's go to TP, let's create any group, let's say all, and we say this particle um, generates a random number, so um, random 0 to 1 value, um, only once. That's exactly what we have in here. Each particle creates a random number between 0 and 1. And then we're typing this into our size um, here. That is the stamping. So this is the exact same thing as those three notes, only that this guy also in the process applies this shape onto the point, but the stamping, this, this stamp function, that is exactly what this is. So this is easier to kind of understand and visualize it because Houdini just has that work. Another basic, yeah. yeah. But in theory, it's the same thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we will go now to apply gravity first, and then we will create some rigid bodies into it. Right. Uh, first, for gravity, we will create a new dy dynamic set. Here, this, this is only rules that we apply to TP. We call which objects we want to apply or force. It's a spheres because we send all these spheres there. We say we create the spheres here, and we send it to this group. So all the spheres are on this group. So everything in TP is group orientated. So uh, you, you start with the group, you don't start with the whole geometry. But you can if you use the all group. Yes, we will be able to do that. That is how Houdini works, no? Everything goes into one big package and then you can tag yeah. them and call them. Like yeah, in groups. Houdini you always start with all and then you filter out the single group. Okay. And in TP you don't have to do this. So now we will say, okay, our spheres, we will apply a force, it's a dynamic force. We can also call the default of, um, forces that we have in max, but in the space warps. The space warps, yes. Uh, so right now we will apply a force of minus 91. I don't know what units are you using in max here, but well, uh, that looks correct. Uh, so they are falling down, but we don't have any physics. Let's make this collide with something. This will be our floor. We need to say that this is a floor. So we need to put this object inside TP. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have a new dynamic set that will be import geometry. And to make it fast, I will use um, object to particle. This is only to bring objects that we have inside uh, max into TP. So you're making the ground the actual particle. You're not you're not using it as a deflector. Ah, exactly. Okay. I don't know if you know that. Now we can do right click and selection, so we import directly what we have. No way. Yes. So that's pretty cool because if we... I'm reverting well, back to uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, never so, Houdini never again. Uh, you see? But that's pretty cool when you have multiple objects that you need to select, now you can do right click selecting. For me it's quite better than before. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small uh, I know, step, yeah, but for me it's... Yeah, we wrote all of this object to particle scripts. And yeah. Everything. And you can select layers or selection sets, so it's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. so the layer to particle is obsolete now? No, because the layer to particle, in yeah, fact, it's, it's, it's dynamic. Workflow, and yeah. it's dynamic. This right. one is not dynamic, but you can select all the objects inside the layers. Right. Um, so, well, we import that was a small parenthesis, uh, we import this as a particle, we need to say where it goes, we will send this to the group uh, ground, so this will go to group ground, and uh, we want to instance the shape. So mm -hmm. now this is a TP particle, and you can see that it's here, mm -hmm. but there is no physics applied. Now, we want to apply physics, in TP we have three types of physics. We have uh, NVIDIA physics, we have bullet, and we have SC. 
Um, and the old shape collisions, of course. And the old shape collisions, but the shape collisions, yeah, override the... Um, the so old... the physics is still in there? The yes, should be there. I don't think that they take it out. It's kind of like they didn't take care so much of it. Uh, I guess that in dynamics. So yeah, physics, yeah. we have it there. Uh, but right now, if I need to do something fast, I will always okay. use bullet because it has been much more developed than physics. Okay. So all of this physics and bullet and SC and shape collision, those are the same as the bullet um, or the RBD solver in Houdini that you would put into the dot network. What do you have in Houdini? You have bullet and then you have you have a SC as a voxel. Um, uh, system? Yeah. Do you have I, anything? No, like there's, there's an old RBD solver. I've never used it. Is that voxel based? I have no idea. Okay. Um, but generally, you just use bullet. That's kind of the oh, yeah. main workflow. At least from what I was taught. But in the then, last few if years. but then, if you want to do a like, we use a lot SC for destruction because we have sometimes interpenetration on the mesh, and if you use bullet, sometimes. Try to explode. Yeah. How do you solve this in Houdini? Um, I was lucky enough to not run okay. into this situation <laughs> yet. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, so now we need to create our bullet engine. It's right click, operator, uh, bullet physics, bullet physics. This is the main engine. One of... question why, why do TP users never use the tab? Ah, in fact, a lot of people use tab. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that use tab. Myself, I get a lot of issues to do that. Right. Um, I also, when I go back to TP, I yeah. always use the right click. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like how... I know exactly what it is, so I don't even check the names. I know more or less. Um, right. I don't know. It's But yeah, there is a tab, so you can write whatever you want. So instead of... You can write bullet physics and you will have it mm -hmm. as well. I don't know. It's like... Alright. Uh, so now bullet physics is the engine we need to call um, all our particles that will be inside the, the engine. So we will reference the top layer because we have inside we have the ground and the sphere. So we need to go one level that embrace everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so which group we want? SC bullet. And right now nothing will happen neither. Because we have the engine, but we didn't define the properties of these right. objects. We need but to define with the shape collision, that would already work. Yes, because shape collision, the thing is that you can define it by groups that I personally hate. It's the old way. Right. So you have... Bullet did work like that before. Yes, the first uh, in TP6.5. Uh, okay. The first time it was also... We had the bullet here. It's faster because you don't need to define it later. But the thing is that you have... Um, all parameters by group. Right. You cannot do it per particle. Right. So one setting for all the particles in that group. Yes. Okay. So you cannot animate these values and you cannot set it per particle or say like, I don't know, maybe you want that the dynamic friction is bigger depending on the size. Right. So you cannot do that here. And, mm -hmm. um, so that's why I like bullet in this okay. uh, aspect. So we need to define what is the ground and what are the spheres. We will say bullet physics. We want to be rigid bodies. We can define as well if we need to be uh, soft bodies. We can create uh, ropes, but right now we want a rigid body. The ground will be a rigid body. Oops. No way. Crash? No way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. We will get don't, that. Don't swear. Ah, no, we'll look at that. We have children watching. It will take five minutes to open. Oh, man. What it is? Maybe in the meantime, I can set up the whole Houdini plus <laughs> constraints and fluid <laughs> workflow until Max opens. <laughs> it never happens to me that Max crash. Never. Never, never. No? Right. It uh, only happens on my machine. Only once. And when I'm watching. Maybe only once a day. Houdini never crash? It does sometimes. Okay. Like more than Max? No. No? Is there anything that crashes more than Max? Um, oh yeah, that, that wasn't actually that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a oh, minute. Still going. Okay, so hopefully it's there. Okay, we didn't lose so much time. Wow. And it creates a connection, look at that. Ooh. So, okay, let's keep going. Um, so we had... Um, 
we was uh, trying to give properties to the ground. We create a rigid body, we connect it. We need to reference which bullet physics engine we are using because we can have multiple of these. Right now we only have one, it's a very basic example. Yeah. The shape that we want, we need to use the simple the simplest one. Mesh is the most complicated and sometimes can have troubles because it do right. face to face. Like concave or convex. Yes. So. so now we can go with convex hole or box. Right now it's a box, so we can use a box. The state active is for objects that are moving. We can use kinematic or static. So let's use static. And we have some parameters here. Friction by default. I don't like it, it's too low. Uh, rolling friction. Also, we have uh, here the friction is only by movement. If you want that to add friction when it's spinning, you can have now the rolling friction. That's something new on 6.5. Uh, Mm. Uh, yes, in 6.5 they add that. So where do these standard values come from? Is there like any INI file that you can edit or is it the default values there? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay, so there's no way Maybe to... Maybe the ini file? I don't know. Mm. I know that, for example, friction, it changed be before 6.5, the values was like, the default value was 50. And they switch it by some reason to 0 0.05. I have no idea. Siva's logic, I guess. Hmm. Okay. And the margin, uh, we add uh, an offset to the each particle, so bullet has right. an easy, yeah, easier like way. The bullet to, standard. Yes. Kind of. So if you increase that, you will get a gap, hmm. but at the same time, it helps a lot if you have fast objects um, or big gravity that you see objects interpenetrating. You hmm. in, you can in, you can increase subsamples or you can add a little of margin and it will help with that. Right. Okay. So that's all what you need to do. Now we can copy that. And the spheres we want to be, um, let's add as a complex school, and instead of a static, they will be active. Yeah. And automatically, this should be set up, and you can see everything working. Whoa. Voila. That only took like 30 minutes to set up. Man, it takes. Well, maybe 10 minutes, but... I mean, you could have used the, the ground just like as a node input. You didn't have to create the group. Yeah, that's true. You can you can input here the, the ground as a floor node, but I like to bring it always as an object to particles because normally you don't have only one object. I In production, we work with like 500 objects, so you will import here instead of one object, 500. All right. But yeah, now let's see in Houdini if it takes less than uh, the time that we're spending ticking. Let's see. Let's, I'll, I'll hurry up, but I can't promise. I know.